Hi. Thank you. Uh, so I, start, I wanted to start out by introducing myself. I know a few of you, but I don't know all of you. I am a communication strategist. I also am a business coach. I coach executives and I advise several businesses uh, across the globe. I am a organizational change management leader. I've executed several global projects. Um, I am a facilitator and I recently had the honor of joining Intersource Commons as a foundation member. My specialty is taking the technical and conveying that very clearly to executives. I've spent most of my career working with executive comms and communications. I will hope for no more feedback. And today I want to talk to you about governance. So what is governance? Got a very nice definition to start us off. I know it's super exciting. It's a set of policies and processes, roles and responsibilities that define how a software project is planned, executed, monitored and controlled. It's kind of a mouthful, not very exciting, but it's pretty comprehensive. However, it's missing one critical aspect and I'd like to invite you to consider what's missing from this definition. Thank you, it is people. And that leads us to a much bigger question. Without people, what do you have when you think about governance? Computers, yes, that's true. You, you just have computers. That's it, nothing else. Governance is about bringing people to projects. It's about showing them how to operate in projects. It's about engagement. And if you don't have people, you have nothing. You, you may have a computer, you have a computer, but you don't have anything. And so I want to encourage and start the conversation about looking at governance from a people first lens, right? It should be co-built because people before process, just like community over code, people before process. The process has to serve the people involved in the project or you have nothing, right? And so let's look at how we can co-create and collaborate on governance structures. I'm going to use an example that I worked on over the last couple of years for a blockchain ecosystem called Cardano. I led strategic communications within that particular project. Uh, just for context, in the blockchain realm, we had 22,000 stakeholders, and that ecosystem was worth $34 billion dollars. And my job was to get all of those people to come together to talk about governance and be a part of governance. Small job, small job. Uh, so the Cardano ecosystem had a five phase roadmap. The fifth phase is governance. Blockchain uh, project had a half a billion dollar treasury that was going to guide its development in the future. And so what we were doing was we were transitioning that development from the original entity who built it through the first four phases and planning on handing that over with a governance structure that allowed the entire community to decide the direction of that blockchain going forward, right? Big deal, half a billion dollars on the line. I got to work with some of the best Hasklers in the world. It was incredible, incredible researchers. And it was a very exciting project. So in November of 2022, we released something called SIP 1694. SIP stands for Cardano Improvement Proposal, and 1694 was the year of Voltaire's birth. This lined out what we as an organization assumed would be a good governance structure. And so we published that, and we allowed people to comment on it back and forth with us for several months. And in February of the next year, we started the next phase, which was a workshop phase. Um, and so in order for governance to be successful, one of the areas that it fails typically is with stakeholder alignment. 22,000 people is a lot of people to get aligned. So we had to start with a smaller group. We started with 40 individuals, which you see pictured here. We invited them to come to a two-day workshop. In order to make this successful, we had to prioritize and create a space in which people could come together and discuss. There were two things that made this successful. The first was we had professional facilitators. I don't know if you've ever been in a room with one guy on a microphone and he's going to talk to you and go on and on and there is nobody listening, right? 
Nobody wants to be stuck in that room. Likewise, oftentimes when you're talking about tech and where things need to go, you're going to have passionate people who vehemently disagree about what needs to happen next. And you don't want a fist fight to break out in the middle of your discussion about governance. It's a bad look. And so we had professional facilitators who helped guide that conversation and look at the different attributes of what the governance system should look like. That was one of the key successes. The other thing, and I'm sure all of you know this, one of the most important additives you can have to have a successful party, anybody know it? It's a good one for governance. We stayed a little away from that until after hours, but uh, a whiteboard, right? Got to have a whiteboard because inevitably someone's going to grab that marker and get up and start diagramming what happens next. So we used a digital whiteboard. We used a digital whiteboard so that everyone could engage Everyone could see what was being said, and all of the voices could be heard. Very, very important. Another way that communications, or the, another way that governance can fail is miss, um, missing an opportunity to communicate and undervaluing the communications that need to happen. And so it was really important that we manage to be as transparent as possible in this process. So after this two-day workshop where we discussed what the governance should be, and we iterated on what the initial framework was, we published those results to the entire ecosystem. And then we have a very important step. And that important step was we invited them to host their own workshop. Right? 22,000 people who are building on that blockchain, their livelihood depends on it, their businesses run on it, it's important to them. They have opinions. It is important. They care. And so we invited them to go to their local community and their local networks and discuss this project in detail and look at it and debate it amongst themselves. And we didn't just give them this digital whiteboard that they could leverage. We also held a call to give them guidance on how to facilitate these discussions themselves because you have to remember they've still got passionate people who are going to debate about what the future of that technology needs to be and how it needs to be governed. They don't want the fist fights either. So we wanted to make sure everyone was equipped to be able to have the most fruitful conversations possible. In order to do that, we needed to have as much divergent thought as possible. It's very, very simple to look at governance as a checkbox. OK, we've got the process. It's all done. Here you go. Deal with that. And does that work? Do you get the engagement from that? No. So we needed to prioritize having as many people participate and provide information and feedback as we possibly could. Prioritizing divergent conversations was critically important. So after the end of those three months where all the people went out and held these workshops, they posted those results in their native language in a forum where everyone could read that. And then we, as the initial team, came together we translated that, and we looked at it, and we listened. Communications is a two-way street. You must listen to your stakeholders. So we listened, and we looked at what was said. And we noticed the patterns that came up and the questions and the most important key components that they needed to have addressed. And once we brought those up and they came out, those patterns, we elevated them, and we held another workshop because we needed to get some answers. And those answers didn't need to come from us. They needed to come from everybody. There needed to be a discussion about which way we were going to go forward so that we could go forward together. And so we held another workshop where we had about 80 key stakeholders come together, and we discussed those questions. And they represented their communities, and they represented their networks. And they came to the table, and we debated again. And then we had facilitated conversations about what happens now with this technology and what happens. How do we govern this? How do we protect half a billion dollars and a way forward? What does that look like? Because we were able to have all of this information and these insights, we were able to converge on a way forward. The end result of this time, which took about a year, we updated SIP 6094, republished it, and we took it to the people to vote on, is this the way that we're going to go forward? And they said yes. And they said yes because we had spent all this time talking 
and listening and debating and discussing. They were integral to how we moved forward. We had over 50 workshops across the globe. We had over 1,000 people participate physically in these workshops. 24 countries were represented in this work. Pretty proud of that. Bring people together, and you can move forward together in a powerful way. Not only that, you have better engagement over the lifetime of that project. Now, this is just the initial phase. Another critical component in that is acknowledge your contributions. These people spent time. They spent money. They gave feedback and thoughts. We acknowledge them. There's a link to a video. I interviewed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people about what they thought about governance. We wrote blogs. There's documentation. I personally entered each and every name that you see here. Those are countries, cities, dates and times that workshops were held across the globe that listed the people who came and showed up and they cared. And if they care, we need to care. Because the way to go forward and have that engagement is together. One guy rowing a boat is not going to get there as fast as five people rowing that boat. At the end of this, we had a governance model that we embraced and we moved forward with. And so you're all familiar with the governance models that exist today, right? You have corporate backed, you have foundation backed, you have boards, leader or founder led, right? You have, you have these models. And these answer a very important question. What they answer is, who makes the decision? That's what it tells you. Who makes the decision? Do you know what it doesn't tell you? How? How do they make the decision? When it comes to making a decision about the way forward, how do they make it? And that is based on their principles and their values. You see, the leadership's principles and values will inform whether or not you want to participate in that. Interestingly enough, in the open source world, we're watching people make some decisions right now about licenses that are informed about their principles and values. And we can see really clearly what's happening. It doesn't align with mine. And what do people do as a consequence? How people make the decision is very, very important because it informs whether or not you should be a part of it or you want to be a part of it or you want to run away as fast as your legs will carry you. There's a gentleman out of the University of Catalonia named Zicardo who suggested a way to provide a little bit of transparency Right? And in open source projects, documentation is key. I'm sure everyone in here on your projects has a readme and a contributing MD on whatever you're working on, and they're fully fleshed out so that people can engage with you. If you don't, please go do that as soon as possible. But I assume everybody here has that. This gentleman suggested creating a governance MD, a governance MD that would, in fact, help people understand how does governance work in this project? Who's making the decision? How are they making the decision? Allow your stakeholders to understand what's going to govern that project going forward. Another great document that I encourage people to have in their project is a communication MD. You can find the link in Intersource Commons, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Who makes the decision? I mean, who, who's making the, uh, who to talk to for the issue? And also, um, what, what they are addressing. Where do you find them? Right? You want to break down issues and blocks for people to engage with you in your project. You have to break them down. You can't allow them to stand. The more transparent you are, the more information you can provide, the earlier and quicker people can come to you to be a part of it. Documentation is critical for that. It's absolutely critical. I want to introduce you to a gentleman... Um, who founded an organization called ProSci. He came out of Bell Labs. Interestingly, he was an engineer. And he noticed patterns in the way people adopted and changed over time. He formed this organization, which is a research organization, primarily. They put together research about how change impacts cultures across the globe. This is the statistics from their recent uh, 2023 report, which is their 12th research. And it shows the representation across the globe and how different cultures adopt and move through the change process. Um, 
And when you think about change, right, the world is changing, it's always changing, how people go through that process is critically important. He identified 10 aspects that impact people and their job and their roles. A couple of these have direct correlation to governance, right? Your systems, your process, your tools. When you change that, which it will change, right, through the course of your project, you're going to need to bring people with you. If you do not support people, they will not come. And, and what does that mean for your project? What does that mean for you? His research showed that people go through about five stages in order to adopt a change, right? And this, is, uh, this goes for awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, and reinforcement. People have to be aware that a change is coming. Research shows that it takes seven times. You must communicate something seven times in order for people to understand what's coming. That's how long it takes to connect seven times. The next step, desire to change, is very interesting because it is something that does not, it is not in the realm of control for the organization, institute, or the project. It's an individual choice. I choose. Do I want to make this change? Or do I want to stay with the way things were? Right? This is where you see people jump off. They no longer participate. They no longer stay with you. They have to have the desire to change. They need to have the knowledge. You equip them on how to change, what behavior is necessary, the ability to change, and then you reinforce it. Bringing people with you is critical on this path, and inevitably things are going to change. Uh, there are a couple takeaways, right? People first. Communication is a two-way street. Listen. 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 Uh, you need to acknowledge the contributions. How many of you want to be acknowledged for your work? <laughs> right? And if someone doesn't say, hey, listen, thanks. Thank you so much. Man, I really appreciate it. You really stepped up, and I thank you. You going to stick around? You going to do it again? I don't think so. Acknowledge your contributors. Every contributor counts. Documentation is critical. It empowers and engages your stakeholders to be a part, to come with you, and support people through change. If you support people through change, they will support you and come alongside you. Uh, this is a QR code you can connect with me. You know, we're, we're in an interesting time in software and in the world in general, right? AI is on one side, regulations are coming down the other. Things are shifting. We're in a transformative period. But with all that said, there is something that is as true today as it was 40 years ago, 20 years ago. Committers, trusted committers, maintainers are absolutely vital. Your leadership, the tone that you set for the project, your willingness to engage with stakeholders, it is the difference between being able to go the distance and not. You're critical, absolutely critical. You lead, and people will follow. Give them paths to come with you and build it together, because at the end of the day, you're going to be stronger and you're going to be better off when you bring the people with you. And nobody, nobody impacts it as much as you do. I don't know how I am for time, but if there are questions. You already have 10 minutes. <laughs>